This is where Newtown ends officially at this point in Carnelian Bay. And it's quite nice down here, but it's not really the sort of place that people would come and have a swim. But they used to. Want to go in, dog? The Carnelian Bay swimming bars were built in 1875 and used by clubs for formalised swimming activities. But in 2009, the buildings burnt down. As much as Newtown might be filled with things, it's also filled with things that used to be. Carnelian Bay was a popular place for picnics and general recreation from the beginning of European settlement. And when Hobart got a train line in 1870, Carnelian Bay also got a train station. In this picture from 1915, we see soldiers marching past the train station and down Queen's Walk towards the race course. The Risdon Racetrack was built on the Bellevue Estate and the track ran from 1892 to 1924. We're down here at Cornelian Bay. I used to play hockey here for my school and club teams back in the 90s. Anyhow, this is part of Newtown. Although it sort of doesn't feel like it because of this thing back there, the Brooker Highway. When that was built, in a sense, it decapitated this lovely natural beach from Newtown. Psychologically, people don't think of it as being part of Newtown, or at least some people don't. In this photo, we can see the Rosella factory to the left before the land was divided. The construction of the Northern Outlet commenced in 1947. The Minister for Land and Works, Edward Brooker, drove a bulldozer over the first stretch and he declared that it would be the finest boulevard in Australia. But he never got to realise his dream because he died early. When the Northern Outlet officially opened, it was named in his honour the Brooker Highway. A long wooden trestle bridge to carry trains across Risdon Road was initially built in 1873. Only one track wide, it creaked under the weight of steam locomotives. In 1914, a new steel girder bridge with land embankments on either side replaced it, and it was used for a century until trains stopped entering and exiting Hobart in 2014. So we're up here on the disused rail bridge. It's only really used by cyclists now. It's pretty unpleasant up here to be honest. It's particularly windy today, so that doesn't help. It's just noisy. It's quite a nice bridge though. I mean, it looks nice from the approach. It's really just an expensive crossing for people on bicycles nowadays, and maybe those scooters that race around town. But it is what it is. It's really just one of those landmarks that's a hangover of something that used to be here. In this photo, we see a somewhat undeveloped Newtown Road, and we see the spot where an important piece of media infrastructure would later be erected. When TV was first broadcast in Tasmania, people gathered in the streets to watch it through shop windows. After watching a speech from the governor, they viewed a news broadcast, saw an episode of Dennis the Menace, and an episode of I Love Lucy. A variety of local TV shows were produced in Newtown. TV, like all culture, will eventually decay. Here in Newtown are the ruins of the TVT6, Taz TV, wind television stations. It was abandoned in 2014, when new technology made it obsolete. Another ghost of industrialism is on Fraser Street. The building is now being converted to flats. Four workmen's cottages connected to the factory remain. The Kensington Boot Factory was built in 1895 and it was the largest boot maker in the colony. It closed in 1915. These two buildings, one, two, were two of many. There was a whole bunch here, and they're historically important. Even though, to look at them now, they look like they might be just a couple of cubby houses, something that could belong in a school playground. 
the Newtown Consumption Sanatorium. It was founded in 1906. Initially, a series of tents, a number of chalets were also built. Among others, it was used to quarantine soldiers returning from the First World War. Two chalets managed to survive, but for a period, they fell into serious neglect before being rejuvenated. A portion of old paint remains in a place for comparison. From 1879, the land on the northern side of St John's Avenue was the location of the annual Hobart Agricultural Show. Before mechanical rides and show bags, the event focused on animals and farming technology. When the showgrounds moved out to Elwick in 1904, the land was turned over into what it is still today, sports grounds. There are several schools in Newtown, but there are two of the most note. Established in 1919, the Hobart Junior Technical College was renamed Hobart Technical High School in 1950. It changed its name again to Newtown High School in 1961. It was always a school for boys, no girls allowed. Established in 1937 as Newtown Commercial High School, the facility initially took male students, but this was stopped. In 1940, it was renamed Ogilvy High School after Premier Albert Ogilvy, who died the year before. He had a situation where the school was named after a male, but where males were forbidden from attending. In 2022, the only remaining single-sex public schools dragged themselves into the 21st century. Teaming up, they became one larger co-ed school. Now sharing both campuses, the place has become the Hobart City High School. In the aftermath of the Great War, the parishioners of St John's wanted to build a memorial to the 100 young men who had enlisted for active service. It took more than 10 years to build St John's Soldiers Memorial Hall. From 1929, it was used to hold Saturday night dances and other things, but over time it was used less. More recently, it was a scout hall. Today, it is boarded up, slipping into ruin. In this photo from the 1870s, we see Newtown Road, and there are two buildings that are still prominent today. Landmarks that appear related. The Newtown Congressional Church opened in 1845, built by James Blackburn in his hallmark Victorian Romanesque style. It closed at the turn of last century. The other building, known to most as the Towers, looks similar. This is because it was also designed by James Blackburn. An unusual mix of colonial and American styles looks kind of like a castle with its turrets on top. British immigrants might construct a building that looks like their idea of a history that they left behind in the former country. Manufactured heritage implanted in a new place. Fantasies of an imagined past belong to many people. It's seen again at Creek Road where a restaurant was built to look kind of like a castle. Not just confined to Britain, the owners of a home off Forster Street built homage to ancient Sparta. Stoke House was built at great expense in 1887 on a seven acre estate. Since then the building has been damaged but not fully repaired. Part of the roof is missing. And the large grounds have been subdivided away. Today, the great building can barely be seen from the footpath. In this photo from 1880, we see a semi-rural area dominated by a series of large homes and mansions. Since then, the area has mutated into a suburban jumble the grand old homes have become obscured by smaller newer homes in increasing numbers. The main architect of Newtown was Chance. It was planned out of accident, an imperfect jigsaw of bad and good pieces. <laughs>